here. You are our hardcore fans, and this is our Boxing Day podcast. And we're going to start it off with a bang with our fantasy football. It's back after our long streak of FIFA videos. But finally, Merry Christmas to you all, and late Merry Christmas. But let's get into our Boxing Day podcast. Sunny, over to you, and let's get the fantasy football started. So, yeah, hello, everyone. So, this is our six, uh, seventh Friday Fields, and... Um, so it isn't looking great on the scoreboard so far. Shoria with a 10 point lead over Sarthak. So Shoria has 46 points, Sarthak has 36 points, and I have 34 points. Wait, Sunny, just one minute. Just just because I'm in the lead, why are you saying it's not great? Not great for me. Okay. Or so. Sarthak. True. So yeah, it, mid midway through the season, but who knows, it can turn around. Anything in a snap of the fingers. Arsenal could be going from relegation battle to Europa League places. However, it's very unlikely. So, let's get into the first match of this Boxing Day special. So, Leicester City versus Manchester United. So, Leicester beat Spurs last week, much to my dismay, 2-0. And Man U thrashed Le- uh, Leeds United, their old rivals, 6-2. So both teams are in pretty good form, but I think Manu will take this one 2-1. Uh, same with me, just like Sané, even I think that Manu will come away, but it will only be a one goal win to Manu. Um, and, it, and it will be a 1-0 win to Manu. I think that it will be a 3-1 win to Manchester United. Next up, Fulham versus Southampton. Fulham have started to get their groove a bit. Three draws in the past three games. And Southampton won't be an easy game at home though. So I think Fulham might win 2-1. It's a bit controversial, but I've gone with it. Uh, so, and both teams are really good teams. They, were, they are what you'd call mid, uh, mid-table teams. Um, just now, uh, Fulham just got re- um, promoted this season. And I think that Fulham and Southampton both will um, give a good fight and it will end as a 1-0 draw. I think it will be a 1-0 win to the Saints with, of course, they've got Ing, Salisu, Ward Prowse. I think they're just far too good for Fulham. Next up, Aston Villa versus Crystal Palace. And Crystal Palace haven't been looking that great recently. Benteke got a red card and Villa have been in great form with... Uh, um, Jack Grealish, their main guy, and I think they will win 2-0. Uh, once again, even I think the same as Sunday, and, and Villa will win 1-0. I think that uh, Jack Grealish and Watkins will score and Villa will win 3-1. Next up, to the biggest match of this week, a London derby, Chelsea versus Arsenal at the Emirates. And Arsenal have been in a horrid form, relegation form, and they will be in a relegation fight this season. And Chelsea are in decent form winning their last game, but their away form hasn't been great this season. So, but I still think that Chelsea will beat this lackluster Arsenal team 3-0. And even I think Arsenal are in terrible form, but they don't first 3-0 one or two weeks ago. There was two Man City form. Just in the start of this week, I think it was. And I think that Chelsea will beat them 2-0. You know. I think that Chelsea will win 3-1. Of, uh, sorry. Um, yeah, I, will, I think they'll win 3-1. I'm, uh, Arsenal haven't really been in good form. But Chelsea haven't been in the best form either. But hopefully my team can beat the um, Arsenal and make London blue. Next up, Manchester City versus Newcastle United. And I think this game will end in a one all draw, partly because two of Man City stars, Jesus and Carl Walker, have tested positive for COVID. So good luck, uh, best recovery for them. So um, even though that Man City have lost a few of their key players, uh, I still think that they're just too good for Newcastle. And a few players will step up a lot, and Man City will win 4 1. I think that uh, Man City will win 5 0. Despite those two stars testing positive, because I mean they've still got Sterling, Aguero, Mara, some of their best players. 
Surely they've won. They've won against Newcastle multiple times, even though they conceded once in the first 30 seconds against them. I think that Man City are far too good for Newcastle. Five nil to Man City. And the final game of Boxing Day: Sheffield United versus Everton. Sheffield United got their second point of the season last week against Brighton, and Everton have been have been decent, and I think it'll be a one-all draw. Uh, so Sheffield United have had um, are in relegation scraps right now, currently sitting rock bottom, 20th in the league, and only got two points. I think this is the worst start for any team in the Premier League, and I think that Everton will win it. Do you know? I think that Everton will win 2-1, despite Sheffield United's terrible form. Next up, Leeds United versus Burnley, and I think this will be a walkover, 4-1 Leeds. Uh, even I think that Burnley a decent team, but Leeds are far too good for them. Um, defensively, Leeds not too good, but offensively, Leeds are very good. And I think that Leeds will win 2-0. You know? Even though Leeds lost 6-2 to, uh, yeah, to Man United, I still think they can win 3-0. No. Next up, West Ham versus Brighton. And I think this game will end in an entertaining 1-0 draw. Uh, even I think that this will be quite a good match, but West Ham will come away with a win and they will win 2-1. I think that David Moyes' side cannot be um, uh, Brighton. I think that um, Tarek Lamptey will shine in this game, provide an assist and make it 1-0 to Brighton. Next up, Liverpool versus West Brom and Big Sam goes to Anfield. And I think Big Sam will come away with a second defeat in a row, 2-1 Liverpool. Uh, so even though I think Big Sam is a great manager, but I think Liverpool, Liverpool are what you'd call the um, probably the best team in the Prem, and West Brom not so much. And I think that Liverpool will win. Do you know? I think that Big Sam will um, come away uh, with a three-one loss, three-one to uh, Jurgen Klopp to Liverpool. And next up, the final game of this week's Premier League action: Wolverhampton Wanderers versus Spurs and this game recently the away team has won so I think Spurs will win 2-1 away at the Molly Uh Spurs did lose in their last match against Leicester 2-0 but um, Wolves are a good team no doubt but I think Spurs are 2-1 and that they will win 1-0. I think that Spurs um, even though they lost 2-0 to Leicester I think they can still beat Nuno, Espirito, Santos, almost fully Portuguese, Wolverside, 3-0, as Spurs are far too good to them. Even though they Wolves did beat Chelsea and played pretty decently against Villa and in their recent games, still 3-0 to Spurs. They're far too good. Jose Mourinho will come away with a win. And, we'll do it, and we will be doing one game of the championship. This is a very good game. Two of the sides that got relegated last season, Watford at home versus Norwich City. Norwich City sit comfortably at the top of the championship, six points clear of the next team. And I think with the help of Timu Puki, Emilino Buen, uh, Bu Buendia and Todd Cantwell, Norwich will win 2-0. Uh, so even I think that Watford are a good team, but Norwich are too good for them. And Ben Foster, the cycling GK, um, is his channel. If you haven't um, watched it before, check it out. And I think Norwich will win, you know. I think that the cycling GK will have a pretty decent performance. He'll be 2 0 to Watford. And we'll leave a link to his channel in the description below. Um, I currently he's running a competition for a cycling GK Watford um, jersey, so you might want to check that out. But yeah, he's a brilliant channel, he's a brilliant pro, and I think he deserves to win this game, and he will win it 2-0. No. At Watford 2-0 to no, Norwich. Okay, so that comes to the end of our fantasy um, football. Now let's talk, shift the focus from football, and let's go to cricket. Firstly, India vs Australia, the Border Gavaskar Trophy. Oh my 
goodness. Let's talk about the first set before we go to what happened uh, so far in this second test, the Boxing Day. Well, well, well. Uh, I, I feel like I, I, I can't bear watch India bat anymore. They don't have the winning mentality to win. And they go ahead and lose by getting out all out for 36. It looks like they gave up at even probably at the fourth wicket, the fifth wicket. Surely they could have tried to keep going. But why do they have to give up so early, not care, and get all out like that? What do you guys think? Yeah, I think it was a pretty bad batting performance. I think pretty, pretty sure he's a young batsman, but I don't think he's good enough to be in the India squad currently. Two two ducks in a row. And I think Shubman Gill is a much better option. And even KL Rahul should come into his squad. Uh, so yeah, pretty sure on the last map did some blunders. Two ducks, as Sani said, he dropped a, a catch, a sit I'd say. And Sadie, you said it's a pretty bad performance. I'd rephrase that to a terrible performance. I think we should upgrade that even more to a disgraceful performance. Ravi Shastri needs to motivate these players or he can go out of that dressing room and they should bring in a motivator. Even if you have... So we need a real leader. I mean, Diego Maradona, of course, rest in peace. Um, he was a legend. However, he was a great motivator as a captain. Maybe not the best as a manager, but he was a brilliant motivator. India need, we shouldn't merge to a ball quick again, but India need some sort of motivator to bring to their team that winning mentality. kohli has gone. Who do you have? Kohli didn't really have much motivation. He didn't really help the young players. We need someone who helps those young players. A good captain. Ravana is decent, but he needs to maybe step up to get to that role. And then you need Ravi Shastri to either motivate or go and India, the BCCI, to get a new coach. That's what I think. And I think that um, India definitely need to hang their heads in shame to represent your country like that and to disgrace yourself and, and let the Australians have so much happiness by getting getting them out. You, you, you let Australia literally just tear through you. You can't do that. Let, but India had a really good bowling performance. Jasper Brummer, well done. He, he got four wickets in um, the Boxing Day test. Um, he, if he did stay up late like me last night, um, I watched a bit of the match. Um, uh, and there was a brilliant... There, there was some... Um, actually, there was a bit of a dodgy catch when Jadeja, um, I think, got the second wicket. Gil, of course, I know he's young, but uh, he, he almost made Jadeja drop the catch. But Jadeja is a brilliant fieldsman. But Bumra had a brilliant performance, getting four wickets, ripping through the Australian order. At the moment, um, Shubman Gill actually is now batting really well. So what do you guys think of um, India's performance so far? With bowling Australia out for 195. And if they can keep it up so they can get crawl their way back into the series and hopefully win that. And I believe the last test is the pink test, which will happen in a 2021, which we all hope, of course, will be a better year than 2020. What do you guys think? Yeah, so I think Mohammed Saraj has been a bright spark in this Indian team, picking up two wickets and he wickets of Cameron Green and Manus Labashain, who is a very good batsman, as we have seen in the Ashes. And also one thing on Steve Smith and uh, just a little stat here. Uh, Bumrah has scored more runs a series than Steve Smith has. So Bumrah, why don't you go number one in test rankings? Eh? So... I think Oshwin has had Steve Smith in his pocket for this whole test series. Getting him out, I think, two two times out in the last three innings. And also, India's woes in battings in the opening batsman continues as Mayan Kogwal got up for Duck to Mitchell Stark. And I think they need a much more solid opening partnership uh, than Gil and Mayan Kogwal. Two very inexperienced batsmen. So I think as soon as Vortish Sharma comes in, that opening partnership will much will be much more solid, and uh, yeah. So I think, what do you think? I think the exact same as both of you. If Jasprit Bumrah stays in this firing form, if Prithvi Shaw stays out of this Indian team for this um, test series, I think that India can probably go all the way and win the series somehow from a terrible and um, batting and getting out for thirty all out for thirty six. What I think um, India should do is. Probably, like, with their bowling attack, it's brilliant. Steve Smith 
you go sit there, wait to get your first run and get going, and then get out to Ashwin that early. Ashwin got that early. You should have, just like India the last this he should hang his head in shame. To get out of a duck and not score a run in his first eight balls, at least score a run, you're Steve Smith, the best, supposedly the best batsman in the world. And you go out there to prove to everyone that you really don't deserve that title by just getting out. Ashwin's had you in Ashwin has had you in their pocket for the his pocket for the entire series. And I think that um Steve Smith definitely needs to sit down as a former captain and probably um will regain his captaincy uh, by um twenty twenty one. He needs to probably just try and um, get but get back on track. I know Steve Smith is a brilliant batsman. He just needs to get his head back on track, but Surely, um, surely it will be a matter of time before he doesn't get out for stupid ducks like these. I think he just needs, he just needs to get, this is just silly. He needs to be better. Let's move on to the BBL now. It started on December the 10th, 16 days ago. We're not halfway through. However, it's been very, 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 it's exciting and strange. I haven't really watched the games, but I've seen some of the, uh, some of the highlights. And the, and the new rules have made it really interesting. What do you think about the new rules? You know, the... X Factor, the power play, super subs, bash boost. Do you think it makes it more interesting or just makes cricket seem really franchised and commercial based? Do you think cricket should be more of a sport or does it just make it better or more commercialized? Yeah, I think so the BBL and the IPL, they're all like commercial anyway. They're all done for money. I think the international matches are much more better. So, I don't really mind if it happens in the BBL much. And also, one more point. So, I, I don't know if you've seen this video or not, but a guy got given LBW when he clearly edges the ball. So, I think DRS must be, must be included in every format of the game, even if it's a BBL. So, I think the DRS is like a cricket VAR, basically. And I think it must be included. Yeah, um, DRS is way more successful, very simply, because you don't have one centimetre. It's fixed rules, and if it's odd, if they don't know, it's umpire's call. The umpire decides, and they can't look at the screen. You don't have all of this ridiculous stuff. Get DRS in every single form of the game. Count whether it be um, county cricket um, or it be the World Cup final. DRS must be everywhere to make sure we get the correct decisions. Um, and they are pretty good third umpires, in my opinion, rather than football VARs. Of course, once again, don't merge the sports, but still, yeah. So, like, what's your opinion on these new rules? Um, on these new rules, I think, so as Sunny said once again, uh, all, all these national, um, except like Ranji Trophy, all these T20 um, international, um, sorry, just national leagues, they're all just franchises. They're just commercial. They just have. They just get um, people rich. They just get the owners rich. It's just basically advertisement. And I think for the BBL, it makes it a little more interesting to watch. But I don't think uh, it can get us a pleasure of watching cricket. Cricket at its finest. Yeah. Um. I mean, Ranji Trophy isn't commercialized. It may be sponsored, but we need to remember that's fully regulated by the BCCI, not by external owners. Like the IPL, it is regulated by the BCCI. However, it is how many sponsors? You have to sponsor a dot ball in the IPL. You have to sponsor an over in the IPL. You need to... What? What are they going to be sponsoring next? The speck of dust on the pitch. You don't need to sponsor absolutely everything, do you? Yeah, yeah, no, I exactly. think it's a bit of a joke. Exactly. I mean, like, for a six, um, I don't remember them, but um, if you guys remember, there was one for a six. Yeah, yeah that was an unacademy cracking six. Yes. An ultra super striker. Yeah, an ultra super striker. They sponsor every single detail. So that just makes cricket. I mean, you can sponsor this name of the series, sponsor the name of the IPL. Don't sponsor everything. As I said earlier, don't box sponsor the speck of dust on the pitch. You you don't need to sponsor that. You don't need to sponsor all of the, all of the things. This is you want to watch cricket. And even though we have betting scandals, it seems fixed even I 
Because I feel need to do something. And so did BBL. M making yeah. this make it cool, but still we want to. Work. All us cricket fans want is good, enjoyable cricket. This may enjoy yeah. it, however, it also slightly ruins it. We want the best cricket possible, and that can only be achieved through not pure commercialism, but just love of the sport and getting the talent on the pitch and basically making them play as they play. Then we can love the sport, right? Yeah. So just a little roundup of all the cricket happening around the world. So South Africa versus Sri Lanka in South Africa, Centurion. So, so Sri Lanka, the underdogs, are pretty much battering South Africa here. Sri Lanka 283 for three. And I think they're pretty much dominating this uh, this day so far. And I think Sri Lanka have a great score on the board to go into second day and bowl out uh, uh, South Africa. What do you think? Um, I think that, um, yeah, I haven't watched this series or already been following it. But Sri Lanka are definitely not, uh, the, uh, I'm just going to grab a quick check. But Sri Lanka are definitely not the team you'd expect to be South Africa. But from what I've heard, they have had a bit of a rejuvenation. I mean, um, if, if the Sri Lanka, they, 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 they do have a good place. 283 for 3. And then they're actually batting pretty well. Of course, Dinesh Dandemal. Um, and then of course, Dan and Jaya De Silva getting retired her on 79. Chandimal on 85. And then, uh, you, and then you haven't got South Africa um, uh, bowling as you'd expect. Only getting three wickets for 283. Sri Lanka could go on to dominate this day, this test. And yeah, the underdogs are seriously doing some damage to South Africa. The host could potentially be in here for, I wouldn't say an upset, but definitely um, a, a, a shock and maybe even be beaten on their own turf. That, that's, that's one of the most embarrassing things to happen to you. It happened to Australia last year. It may happen again this year if India managed to get their game up. But this could happen. Yeah. Things are surely, slowly but surely happening in this test. Yeah, and just a last test match happening in New Zealand. New Zealand versus pa Pakistan. And Pakistan aren't looking great here. They lost Barbara Azam to an injury. They lost, uh, what's was name? Chadav Khan to an injury. And New Zealand 2-2-3, for three. Uh, Kane Williamson, the captain set. Henry Nichols set. And... I think it's going to be a tough road for Pakistan to get back into this match. Uh, yeah, Kane Williamson, if he hits a six on, six on his next ball, he gets 100. He needs six more runs to get 100. Of course, he needs to tread on steady water. But if he, if he, if he, he just needs six more runs, and Kane Williamson is one of the best players, one of the supposed fab four. Um, and then you also have Henry Nichols doing really well. Um, Pakistan, Shaheen Afri has been doing pretty decent. He's got all three wickets, but um, Shaheen Shahafri, he can't, he can't carry the entire team. He was lost yeah. by the fun, but uh, uh, Abbas and Naseem Shah, the 16-year-old pacer, Yasir Shah, they all need to do stuff. Yeah. Yeah, so I don't think Pakistan have that drive to beat this uh, really good New Zealand team with the likes of Trent Bolt, Tim Southey in their bowling attack. Yeah, and I think that yeah, this is this, 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 this we've got really exciting games going on in cricket, and I, I I'm just going to say to all of you hardcore fans here, watch all the cricket and football you can in this period. It's it, it's the most exciting it will get. It's either now 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 Christmas time, New Year time, and the end of the season football season, and um in the summer for cricket. That's when games start getting really exciting. So get on, if you have time, get on your TV, uh, watch some games if you can, and yeah, enjoy yourselves. Um, uh, a late Merry Christmas to all of you, a happy Boxing Day, and we hope you have a brilliant time. And we will see you guys next time. Peace.